All right. Hi, everyone. This is Piper DeBruller, and I am back tonight on The Rabbit Show to talk about Jersey Woolies. So I'm super excited to talk about Jersey Woolies, um, cover some of the topics that um, we've talked about and other presenters have spoken about. So we're going to talk a little bit about my experiences as a Jersey Woolie judge, some of what I feel are the breed's uh, most defining characteristics, some of the faults that you see, a little bit about the colors, the grouping, things like that. Um, so we'll cover a little bit about that. But first, I'll introduce myself again. Again, my name is Piper DeBruller. I've been a judge since summer of 2012. I'm gonna travel all over the world judging. It's been a great experience. I love judging. I miss it. The fact that with COVID, we have not gotten to nearly as many rabbit shows. So I'm definitely missing it. So I'm loving the opportunity to participate virtually and talk about some of the breeds that I love to judge. So after my introduction, we'll talk a little bit about the things that I'm gonna sort of break down my presentation into four kind of five parts, okay? So we're gonna talk about what makes Jersey Willies unique as a breed and their defining characteristics. Okay, so we'll cover all that from the fact that they're shown in groups as opposed to varieties. We'll talk about posing and handling. We'll talk about breaking down that standard body type versus wool, things like that, okay? Then we're gonna talk about the traits that in my opinion, the best rabbits within the breed possess. Part three will be breed specific common faults. These will be things that I've seen uh, judging on both the local and national level throughout the breed in Jersey Woolies. And then we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about my experience judging the breed, favorite classes, favorite groups, some of the outstanding animals that I've had my hands on over the years. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit about um, color and its correlation with wool and how that can affect since the standard hits on that. Uh, that's what I'd like to talk about as far as color for Jersey Woolies. So I have never raised Jersey Woolies. I'm lucky that I've gotten to judge a lot of really, really nice Woolies over the years. Friends with some breeders that have outstanding animals. Um, had a lot of good experience with Woolies, so I'm excited. They're such a fun breed to judge. They're so cute. They're easy to handle. Uh, really nice representations of the breed, so I'm excited to talk about that tonight. So, and hopefully at the end, people will jump on with questions, or you are always welcome to contact me outside if you have any questions about what I'm going to talk about today. So, I, of course, have my standard with me. Okay, so we'll be referencing that straight from the standard. Okay, I have it open to the Jersey Woolly page. So we can talk a little bit about point breakdown and things like that as it pertains to our conversation tonight. So, okay, so part one, what makes Jersey Woolies unique as a breed and some of their defining characteristics? So Jersey Woolies are a little bit different than kind of any other breed out there. Okay, from their posing and handling to body type to the wool, things like that. Um, so Jersey Woolies, I think, in my opinion, uh, sometimes get a little bit misconstrued. They're not technically considered a wool breed. It says right in the standard that their wool is not to be used for commercial use. Okay, so I know for me, when I started working with my judges assistants and breeders, we really harped on body type and proper posing and handling. So in my opinion, opinion the medium uh medium high headset that jersey willies have it's different than a netherland dwarf that's very very high okay but also for the standard you don't want to be shoving the, their heads down okay, at all and this is where it's kind of hard i wish i had in it uh, some breed specific examples to show you but i don't um so i think that's important and that's where if you are a breeder it's important to work with other breeders talk with judges you know, see what they think and how they pose and handle them. But it says right in the standard that, you know, you don't, you don't want to pull them up too high, okay? They should be posed directly in the standard, okay? It says, Jersey Woolly should be posed in a relaxed, natural position to display a high head mount, thus accentuating the compact type and bold head, okay? So Jersey Woolies are, of course, a compact breed of rabbit. They're sectioned into the compact breeds, similar to a Minirac, the Florida White, other breeds like that, okay? So they are a compact breed, okay? But you also do not want to stretch them out. 
nor do you want to, you know, pose them with their heads down and things like that. So in my opinion, part of what makes Jersey Willie so unique is the posing structure. And I think that the standard does a great job of telling us how they should be posed and handled. Um, you know, you don't want to be overly forceful with them. You don't want to let them just sort of sit on the table and do nothing. Okay, so in my opinion, there's not too much left for interpretation on Jersey Woolies. Um, I think, you know, having a section on posing is really good in the standard. And I love that. And I think that makes it a little bit more clear for judges and breeders, okay, new breeders that are working with the breed and are wondering sort of what to do, okay, things like that. Okay, so not only do you have the defining body type and the posing structure of the animal, but you also have the fact that they are a wool breed, okay? So although the standard specifically says that they are not a wool breed for commercial wool purposes, it is very important, okay? It's worth 27 points in the standard, their wool texture being the uh, with the highest number of points, followed by density, and then of course, followed by length. So I think that it's important to remember that general type is worth 58 points, Wool is only worth uh, 27. Color and condition add another 15 to that. Um, but it's still, you know, the emphasis is really on, on body type. Those 30 points on body type are very important. Uh, the 16 points on the head, and that's what we'll talk a little bit about, head, head structure, ear. And for fellow judges that are watching this, I think it's so important to give commentary on those things as well, okay? So notwithstanding, of course, the wool is an important feature of the breed. It's obviously a defining characteristic. However, I think it's very important that we keep in mind that the point breakdown in the standard tells us how we should evaluate those animals. So if I were gonna talk about defining characteristics as we just have, that's what I would talk about the posing and hand length as it comes with regards to body type. And then of course the wool and the point breakdown. So those are some of the things that I think are um, what make the Jersey Woolly definitely special. You know, the wool is not not the same as an English Angora. It's not the same as a French Angora, okay? <coughs> so I think that's very important to keep in mind, okay? So the next part is traits that the best rabbits within the breed possess. <clears throat> so I was lucky when I first got my license, I would travel a lot to where in the area where I live now, um, down south, also the Midwest, really, really strong examples of Jersey Woolies. It was not, not a big deal to have a hundred Woolies at a show. Um, so I was lucky that I had my hands on a lot of great animals, sort of right from the start. Worked with some long-term breeders, a lot of Jersey Woolly breeders that I've had them a long, long time. You know, you go to Ohio, Michigan, you have people that have, you know, raised the breed for a long time. So in my opinion, the traits that the best animals possess are a balance of the standard, okay? I've spoken about this in multiple other conferences. If I had a PowerPoint, it would say, I would of course have the breakdown. And I would of course have the fact that you want a well-balanced animal, that those points add up to as close to 100 as possible. So you want to win a national show. You want to win convention with your Jersey Woolies, okay? You're going to need rabbits that are well-balanced, okay? Balance in two parts, body and wool, okay? Because that's where the bulk of your points, you know, that's where all your, all your points are. You know, when it comes to color and condition, that's part of wool. You know, when you're talking about head, eye, ears, things like that, okay? That's all in body type, okay? So when you're trying to raise an animal that can win at the national level, the rabbit that is going to win at convention or nationals, as opposed to, you know, a local show against five other rabbits, okay? Or, you know, if you're talking to a rabbit that is going to take best in show at a very large show, Pisarba, oh, how many convention? You know, David does the Christmas show. We have West Coast Classic, you know, major, major shows like that. Okay, you need animals that are well balanced and where their points add up to as close to 100 as possible. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. So the traits that a best Jersey bully is are uh, the like the best animals are going to possess are going to be well balanced animals that comes as close to the standard as possible, as close to those 100 points as possible. Okay, and that's where it's important that you need to break down the points, whether you're a judge 
or whether you're a breeder and you're evaluating rabbits in your own herd. Think about whether um, those ears are a proper length, they balance well with the body, are they thick, are they well furred, do they have a good shape, you know, are they going to comprise of all 10 points or are they only going to get maybe four points out of that and you're already going to be, you know, 100 minus six, just right up the bat. Okay, so you're going to look at that. So Jersey Woolies, when you're evaluating, you want to pose them as per the standard, okay? You want to pose them with their medium high head mount, okay? Natural pose. You don't want to push them down to the table. You don't want to spring them up. You don't want to be doing like a petite, getting that head up here, you know, where their front limbs are so accentuated, okay? So you don't want that. For Jersey Woolies, one of the first things I look at once I pose up the rabbit again, um, you really want to get your hands on the rabbit. That wool can sometimes be deceptive. You have rabbits that have really long wool. Okay, similar in any of the wool breeds where it's very important to really put your hand on that animal. Okay, so you're not going to do it forcefully, but you're just going to be able to feel that body type. Even on that head, sometimes they can have all this extra wool in with, a, you know, and it's harder to see whether that with the muzzle curvature of the skull is really there or whether it's just a uh, an illusion given the amount of hair or wool that is on the rabbit. Okay, so the best Jersey Woolies, you wanna see a very nice broad head. You wanna see good with a muzzle, good with between the eyes, okay? The head, it's defined as being wide and short and that's what you wanna see. So again, you want a little bit blockier head. You know, you don't want something narrow like a Britannia Petite. You don't want something sort of in the middle like a mini Rex, things like that, okay? But you want to, uh, you know, see that wool cap, the dense wool from the, the ear base forward, you wanna see that, things like that. So the best animals I would say, obviously are gonna possess a nice wide blocky head, okay? And you're gonna see this represented in both your bucks and your does. I think sometimes bucks tend to have a little bit more maturity to their heads, I've seen some many, many does over the years that have had spectacular heads. Really nice with the muzzle, excellent width between the eyes, very good curvature of that skull. Okay, so you're gonna start off with the head, then you're gonna go forth to the ears. Ears are worth 10 points, that's a, that's a lot for ears, okay? So I think ears are a very important part of the breed. Okay, so as always, you want an ear that is well-balanced with the animal, okay? The um, ideal length of ears is two and a half inches. Okay, can't be over three inches long. Okay, so regardless if you have a super deep rabbit or you have a larger rabbit, those ears can't be over three inches. Okay, so ideal two and a half. So that's important to keep in mind. Thick, well furred, uh, having good substance, carried erect. You want you don't want ears that are scissoring. Okay, you want them to be held together. Um, you want the tips of the ears to be slightly rounded, similar to a Netherland Dwarf, Dwarf Hotel, Polish, things like that. You want to have them, you know, good shape to that ear. And I think it's important to highlight that. Again, you have ears in this breed are worth 10 points, and that's pretty significant. So I would say that when you have the best, the best animals have, you know, a really nice head, a good gray bold eye, and good shape, substance, and fur coverage to that ear. Okay. So once you have that, you're gonna evaluate that head and then you're gonna look at the body type as you pose up this rabbit in a natural pose, okay? Medium high head mount. Don't wanna overpose them. You don't wanna throw them down to the, you know, down to the table either. So as you go ahead and do that, you're gonna be looking for that compact body type. So short, round, deep, full, okay? As we've talked, I've talked a little bit about when I've spoken on other compact or four class breeds, not typically meat breeds, that you still want an animal that it's full in the loin and the lower hind quarter. So you still need to have that width there, that muscling, that fullness throughout. And that's gonna be something that sets aside the best rabbits. Okay, the rabbits that feel really good. So if you have a rabbit that's got a really nice coat, it looks really good when you come when it comes up to your table, but then you get your hands on it, it's kind of narrow in that shoulder lacking some fullness, that loin's kind of, you know, rough over the spine. That's not a good, not a well-typed animal, okay? They're not going to get those 30 points for body anywhere close, okay? So 
even if they have a great coat of wool, you're still really going to have to delve into evaluating that rabbit and looking at them. So once you have that, so the best rabbits, really nicely balanced head, eye, and ear, getting a lot of points there. Then you have a, a well-filled out compact body type. Okay, good smoothness throughout, good structure, good top line. Okay, and I think top line is where you're really going to have the posing come into play. I think it's really important that you pose the animal correctly. Again, the standard tells us how to pose the animal. They break it down pretty simply. Okay, I feel like there's not a ton of room for interpretation there. Okay, it, there's a section on posing and there's, there's not a section on posing for all the breeds. And I love that you have that in Jersey Woolies. So to me, there shouldn't be a whole lot of question about the way that you pose Woolies. But that's just my opinion on that. Okay, so then obviously the best animals are, like I said, a balance between type and wool. Okay, so body type and wool. You're going to want to put them together if you're going to have a rabbit that's going to win at a national show, at a convention. And Jersey Willies have done very well at convention. Number of group winners. We had um, the youth bus and show last year was a Jersey Willie. So the rabbits are capable of being very, very close to the standard. And I think that's how my experience judging Willies has been. Now there's a lot of really nice animals, a lot of animals that really meet the standard, come close to that 100 point in the standard. So let's talk a little about wool. Okay, so Jersey Willies are supposed to exhibit an easy care coat. Okay, you don't want them to have a coat that you have to work with a whole lot. Okay, so as a judge, we want to have animals that are well groomed. They have nice, you know, feeling coats. They look and feel good. So the 27 points of wool are broken down for 14 for texture, eight for density, and five for length. So length is the least amount of points. That's only five, okay? Only five points, so not a whole lot. So I tend not to harp on Jersey Willie on wool length. Again, balance is important, okay? So in my opinion, um, the texture, okay? You want the a greater proportion of heavier, thicker guard hairs than that crimped under wool. You want a slightly coarse texture coat, okay? Slightly, okay? You don't want to wrap it that is super soft and cottony and feels like a cotton ball, but you also do not want something that's so harsh and wire, like you're like you're feeling a wire brush. Okay. That's not what you want. Okay. So that's why I think it's hard when people read the standard and it says that um that it should have, you know, a slightly coarse texture to the coat, because you know, and everybody feels things differently. So I think that's important. You see obviously a lot of juniors that have the soft cottony texture that wool, but don't exhibit the protrusion of the guard hairs as much. Okay, sometimes you get it in older juniors, but a lot of times, and I think that you need to show those juniors grace. Okay, a lot of times they're on the table to get commentary, see what, you know, get some table experience and it's important to give them comments, but of course reflect that, you know, they don't have, they don't exhibit the jersey, the optimal jersey woolly coat per the standard on that day. So the best animals you're going to focus on having a really nice texture to that wool, okay, because that is the worth, the most amount of points. Okay, so then followed up by density worth eight points. So you want a thick coat, okay, a lot of density, greatest density possible is what you want. Um, so a lot of times I feel like you see it in your Selfs, okay, you get a lot of what uh, roos that have really, really nice coats. They have a lot of density. They have really proper texture. Sometimes you don't get it as much in the other uh, varieties, groups, things like that. Um, the minimum length of wool is an inch and a half. Again, uh, length is only worth five points. So in my opinion, it's not something that should be harped on a whole, whole lot. Okay, but as we're separating the top tier animals from the others, you want to make sure that. Um, it's as close to that ideal wool length of three inches as possible. Uh, probably not going to be the closer to the one and a half inches. Uh, in my opinion, I've seen, I see a lot of does, a lot of senior does that just don't have quite that length of wool overall. Um, some of your senior rocks tend to have a little bit longer coat. Okay, but no preference is going to be given for rabbits that have, have a wool length. Um, the standard, the ideal wool length is three inches. So you'll be able to see that. Um, Wool on the underside of the animal is allowed to be shorter. 
Um, the only disqualification is, of course, um, one and a half inches in length, except the underside. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's sort of the breakdown of the points. And I've tried to highlight on the traits that the best rabbits within the breed possess. So I focus a lot on that head, eye, and ear, that short, compact body type that's still full despite being covered in wool. And then wool that is the balance um, uh, is close to that three inches as possible. You know, again, length only worth five points. Density, you really want an animal that's got a really nice dense coat of wool, okay? And lastly, followed by condition, because that's important too, okay? Um, we, color doesn't, I've seen really nice woolies in, within all the groups, to be honest, okay? I've seen really, really nice blues in your self group, I've seen really nice AOVs, um, really nice hemis. Uh, pointed whites in your uh, your AOV group, um, really nice otters in your tan pattern, uh, things like that. So, so we're not going to uh, talk about color too much as opposed to when we we're talking about the traits of the best rabbits within the breed because that's because painting the house is the last step. Um, so, so in my opinion, that's how. So focus more on finding a well balanced animal, balance of body type and wool when you're looking for the very best animal. And that's what sets your top tier, your national and convention winners, your best in show at these larger shows. And that's what's going to, uh, what you're gonna talk about. Okay, so part three, breed specific common faults. Okay. In my opinion, one of the things that you see the most are lack of maturity in your juniors. Okay, and so that would be something that I see it at the national level. I see it at the local level. Juniors that just don't have the maturity today, okay? Smaller rabbits, but lacking maturity, particularly in the head. So I feel like I see a lot of woolies on the table that are narrower in that head, okay? And the head, the standard specifically talks about narrowness in the muzzle that you don't want a snipey head, okay? Snipey head, the ears that cross over quite a bit, scissoring, uh, which is of course not something that you want. You don't want ears that V out, but you also don't want ears that cross over, okay? So those are definitely some things that I see as opposed to um, the head and the ear. The ears that are a little bit more pointy, okay? So maybe they'll be pointy, they lack that roundness of shape, okay? Where the standard says slightly rounded up top. I see ears that are more pointed, they don't have that great shape, a little bit thinner. Um, I also see rabbits that have, um, sort of an elongated front limb as if you'd see in a hell knot sometimes. And sometimes that can make it a little bit harder for posing and handling because the rabbit that has a longer front limb extension, they're gonna wanna sit up more. They're going to want to pose higher up because they, they have more front limb extension. They have longer front limbs. So it's more comfortable for them to sit up than for them to sort of be in that medium high head mount. They're more likely to wanna, you know, pose up like that. So not only do I, so those are some of the body type faults that I see. Wool I see a lot on our juniors, the lacking of maturity, a little bit more soft and cottony in texture. They don't quite have that density, but more than anything, they just don't have that texture, which is of course where the most points are. So you're, a lot of times you hit some of your juniors hard because of that. They just don't have the texture. They're not gonna be able to get the points to compete with the rabbits that have, have better texture overall. I also see um, seniors with pretty short coats. Okay, so again, you're gonna wanna make sure that over the top they're an inch and a half, okay? They can't have a coat that's any shorter than that. So if you have, especially you see in senior does, rabbits that are molting out, okay, you wanna look for that. So that's what you see. And I feel like you don't see it nearly as much the national level, <clears throat> you know, when people are paying. <laughs> $12, $16 for an entry, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to drag out their little tiny baby juniors that aren't going to do anything. So I feel like you don't see that as much at the national level, see it more at the local level overall, um, as far as, you know, some of the breed specific common faults that you see. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about um, the varieties and the groups, okay? So Jersey Woolies are, of course, shown and groups as opposed to varieties. So we have six different groups, Agouti, AOV, Broken, Self-Shaded, and the Tan Pattern Group, okay? 
<clears throat> so luckily our standard breaks this all down in case you have any questions, um, become confused about anything. Uh, they can come in a lot of colors. Um, so I don't see a whole lot of correlation between quality and color. I've seen a lot of really nice representations of the breed in multiple different varieties. Okay, broken down into your groups. Like I said, <laughs> I've judged some absolutely beautiful goodies in squirrel, chin, opal. Um, you know, they're they're there, the quality's there. Chestnut, really nice animals. Like I said, in AOV, I've seen some really nice painted whites. Um, shaded, I feel like you don't tend to see as much, but I have judged some absolutely beautiful blue torque out there. So um some really nice stable points. Um Brokens, uh, not a whole lot to talk about um, with brokens. Um, they are um, color less than 10%, more than 50%. Um, I'm not sure whether that will be changing with our next standard. I know I know Minirex is, Jersey Woolies, that's something that you'll want to keep in mind, judges, as we delve into a new standard in the coming year. Um, the fact that some of these, these changes are going to take effect. So, Broken, see a lot of really, really nice brokens on the table. That's definitely something that from the time I've started judging Woolies that I've seen really, really awesome brokens out there. So really nice brokens. Um, your self group where you have black, blue, chocolate, lilac, blue eyed white, and red eyed white. Um, you have really nice rabbits. Your whites, especially your red eyed whites tend to have a lot of density. Okay, they tend to have really nice texture. So that tends to, you know, really set them pretty high up. Just really nice blacks, some really nice blues. Um, not as many chocolates or lilacs, but, you know, you do see them on the table. Um, like I said, your shaded. I've had some really nice blue torts throughout there. Um, lastly, you have your tan patterns. Okay, so black otter, blue otter, sable martin, silver martin, smoke pearl martin. Uh, you can't have blue uh, chocolate or lilac otters, um, whereas you can in your silver martins, you can have black, blue, chocolate, or lilac silver martins. So that's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. Um, smoke pearl martins. Uh, as always with your dilute colors, I think that's important. So what we look for in colors, again, as someone who's not a breeder and I didn't have, you know, I don't have access to, to multiple rabbits where I can show you guys the variations of the varieties. But you're always going to look for the breed specific faults, the color specific faults in, you know, the, your dilutes. You're going to want to make sure that your blues, your blue torts, your lilacs, um, your <laughs> blue and lilac silver martins, your blue otters. You don't want to check toenail color. Of course, always uh, toenail color is a big one. You're going to want to look at that. Um, so I can't say that there's any varieties that stick out as being something that are very questionable. But I do think it's important to talk about um, the colors as when it comes to a wool breed and why the color looks a little bit different as opposed to a Minarex that has a, you know, a coat of five eighths of an inch um, as opposed to three inches or longer, or at least, you know, two and a half. Um, so the color is not going to be as defined towards the end of the hair shaft. So we're talking about the surface of the animal. Okay, so when you blow into that coat of wool, okay, it's gonna be deeper a lot of times at the bottom. Okay, obviously you account for ring color, ring definition, things like that. Um, but the extension of the color is not gonna be as deep. And that's where I think sometimes it, there's questionability when it comes to um, in your larger Angora breeds, your English Angoras that have these massive coats. Okay, sometimes it's harder to tell variety, the color on them, the registration variety because of that wool and it doesn't extend on that. So I think for Jersey Woolies color like that is something that you're gonna take into account. Your blacks are not always going to look super black, especially if they have a longer coat um, because you're gonna lose some of that color as you get higher up on the hair shaft. So lower again, you're gonna have more depth of color. You're not gonna have that as they lighten up a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind. I see it a lot in black otters, especially too. They appear to be a little, not necessarily faded, but a little bit lighter in color. And that's because they're a wool breed. So that's something you take into account. And 
it, you know, it talks about how body color can appear lighter on the head, ears, and feet. Um, so, you know, you want to account, you don't want to, it also talks about pseudo ring color in your juniors and things like that. And for anyone that raises any agouti rabbit, you know that when they are molting, the ring color, ring definition is totally off. I think about when I raised Caster Mini Rex, Opal Mini Rex, they just had color that was all over the place. As they were transitioning coats, you would blow into that coat and there'd be no, it would be in different stages of transition. So you want to account for that in your Jersey Willie Juniors. Okay, so don't be so quick to think that there's something wrong with the animal. It's just that color coming in as that wool is growing and developing. And so that's what I, you know, really harp on as far as varieties and your groups. Okay, you're gonna see different depth of quality within your groups and your certain animals, some of the varieties that have been worked on more than others, some that are a little bit more developed than others. Um, so I think that's something to keep in mind. But like I said, I've seen a lot of really nice animals in a lot of different colors for Jersey Woolies. So, so there you have that. Okay. And lastly, I will talk a little bit about my experience judging the breed, um, some of my favorite classes and why. So my favorite, my favorite time of judging Jersey Woolies have been at some of the larger shows uh, that have not been nationals or conventions, but have maybe been the weekend of a national where I've had my hands on some really nice rabbits. Like I said, when I first got my license, I, I traveled to a lot of states that had a lot of woolies. Uh, down in North and South Carolina, there are so many woolies, so many woolies. There are such a big woolly breeder contingent. Um, also in the Midwest, in Ohio, Ohio Mini Convention, people that came down from Michigan. You also have out in California. Again, we've had group winners that have come out from the Midwest, from California. Uh, recently, we've had, you know, people that live in Missouri have had really, really nice Jersey Willies. But so I was very lucky that from the start, I was exposed to a lot of really nice Jersey Willies. Um, I was able to ask, talk to breeders and ask a lot of questions as opposed to um, posing and handling, evaluating the rabbits, interpretation of the standard, top line, things like that. So I'm very lucky that my experiences, you know, I was able to get a lot of breeder and judge experience from the time that I first got my license. And I think that's what, and Jersey Willies are, are they're easy to handle. They're nice rabbits. You know, they just, a lot of times they don't give you a lot of problems. So I have to say that that, in my opinion, that affects things. It makes the breed really nice to handle, really nice to evaluate. Um, so some of the favorite rabbits that I've had my hands on over the years, I've had some spectacular broken, definitely some really nice Brookings over the years. Um, Ohio Mini Convention, there's some larger shows in um, the South where there's been really nice rabbits. And again, this is where it jumps out when when I, in part two, when I talked about the um, breed specific traits that, that the best rabbits of the breed possess. Um, rabbits that posing came naturally. They were, they, you know, they were structurally correct animals. So it's easy for them to pose. Like when we talked about for part, uh, for the breed specific faults, if you have a rabbit that their front limb is too long, they're not gonna pose properly because they're not built structurally correct. Um, and I've always been a big person on, a, I've always had a big emphasis on that. Um, for people that can't get a, a junior to pose, for some reason they just don't want to behave and you know their shoulders always look long. Well, probably because their shoulder is long. Okay, you can't, you can't fake the way that a rabbit looks all the way. Okay, so if you have a hall and lop or Jersey Willie that is not posing, okay, there's probably a reason why. Okay, so structurally, you want a structurally correct animal and they're going to be the best animal that they possibly can be at posing. So like I said, I've had a, some really nice brogans over the years. Uh, rabbits that have had really nice with the muzzle, excellent width between those eyes, really nice shape, substance, as far coverage to that ear. They've had a nice bright gold eye. They just have this gorgeous headpiece, okay? And then when I get my hands on them, they're full throughout, okay? So like we talked about, not a meat breed, but you want that fullness. You know, I don't want a narrow shoulder. I don't want uh, lacking fullness, not midsection. And then of course you have wool. 
which is a very important sort of finishing point to the breed. So I have rabbits that have really nice even length of wool that is, you know, usually around that three inches, that ideal length, really nice texture, not too harsh, not too soft, but you want a slightly harsh texture for the standard rabbits that possess a lot of density. This is where it jumps in my mind when I've judged some really nice selfs over the years uh, that I've had some really nice red-eyed whites that have had a lot of density and very correct texture to their wool. I've also seen this on AOVs over the years as well. Um, some really nice uh, rabbits there that have really, um, those pointed whites that have really possessed a lot of density, really nice, prop, really correct, proper texture to that wool. So, um, so that's sort of about that. Um, I'm not sure if there's really anything else that I haven't covered. Um, so we've talked about um, what makes the breed unique. And I think Jersey Willies are a very unique breed. They're a great breed to work with. Uh, you have a lot of really, really nice animals out there. So it's easy for judges and breeders to be able to get experience judging correct animals, whether you're on the East Coast, the West Coast, or the Midwest, which is really nice. Um, you know, there's not only one section sector of breeders that, you know, focus on the breed, which is nice. Um, uh, the traits that the best rabbits within the breeds within the breed possess, um, the breed specific common faults. We talked a little bit about color and the evaluation of color and why and how wool play a factor in that. And then of course my experience is judging. Like I said, I have a lot of experience judging them at the local level where I've had my hands on some really nice rabbits. I've selected a number of Jersey Willies for a uh, group or best in show wins, reserve and show wins over the years. Um, I felt like the woolly numbers for a little while were getting a little bit smaller as you had some breeders fade out and recently at the shows that I've been to, there's been, you know, around a hundred woolies. So that's been really nice to see the breed, you know, come back along with a lot of dedicated breeders. So as always, 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 there's a reason why we have the standard. Okay, keep that out. Add up those points. Okay, read the standard, the verbiage. I don't remember exact wording in the standard all the time. No one does. Okay, that's why we have it. And it, of course, changes every five years. So you have to look for adaptions, uh, talking to other breeders, okay? Getting experience, getting your hands on rabbits, the differences between juniors and seniors, mature wool, amateur wool, things like that. So I guess now we will see if anyone has any questions.